Hello and welcome to Gary Vapes and today we are looking at the new Freemax Galax Pro. It's basically an improvement to the original Galax so let's dive down we can have a look show you what you get in the box if you want to buy one tell you a bit more about it and we can come back up and I can tell you some pros and cons and how I've been getting on with it for the last couple of weeks. Okay, so here it is, the Freemax Galax Pro. Um, and it may look familiar, and that is because it's basically a new and improved version of the original Galax. And we'll go more into that in a bit, but as you can see here, if I just put them down, it's a little bit taller and it's a little bit chunkier. But the main thing is, as I say, it's an improvement to the existing. So they've done things like move the Type-C from the bottom and put it on the side. They've added a screen, which the original one didn't have like so and little custom type things like that so yes it's a pro as in it's slightly improved but as far as what you get this is the actual box as you can see there it uses the gxp mesh coil now this is the new coil you do get one of these it's the 0.8 ohm one it uses the full spectrum vaping and on the side here as you'd expect from freemax it uses their fm smart coil technology 4.0 it's child resistant 5 to 25 watts a little bit of info on the back there what you get inside it and then there is their sociables if you open it up Inside you'll get, as expected, you'll get your little warranty and little manual thing there which tells you all about it and what to do in various languages. You do get, as I say, two calls. You get the 0.8 TXP mesh call, but you also do get one of their one own calls as well, which obviously pops into your pods, which we'll look at more when we go down. And then you'll do get a Type-C charging cable as well for needs, and it is actually quite a long one. It's not massively long, but it's a lot longer than most of the ones you normally get, which seem to be getting shorter and shorter so they must be trying to save money. But right, as far as that goes, let's move that to the side and let's dive down even closer and have a look at the actual mods themselves. Okay, so yes, as I say, it pretty much is just an upgrade to the original Galax. Um, now, there are some things I like and some things I don't like when it comes to this, which we'll talk about more when we go up. But the biggest thing would be, obviously, that screen. It now has an actual screen where the original Galax didn't. It just had this nice light-up type area when you plug it in like so, and it uses that full-spectrum vaping. Now, I will say, slight spoiler, the biggest disappointment for me is when I think full-spectrum vaping, I think more than just this little tiny bit on the side here, um, which you'll see once it turns on. There we go. So... You push it twice to get it to come on but yeah i just expect a little bit more than that i mean that's not full spectrum to me it's a tiny little bit on the side which is a bit of a letdown but again we'll talk about it more when we go up but yes as you can see there there's your main differences now you can use the same pods in all the galax mods so that is nice to see that compatibility there but yes and that is the main differences between them and the biggest and most important one is that type c being taken off the top and put in on the side and the reason for that is if i take this off now you will see in there there is a slight bit of leakage now that's not that actual pod leaking it's leaking through the coil where it's left on its side to be charged um, so that is one thing that is a very much needed improvement but right apart from that let's look at the actual device itself so yes it uses this um how do we say um annoying old-fashioned looking green type screen there's only one way of saying it um which is a bit of a disappointment again when you think full spectrum vaping you expect colors and newness and things like that but basically it's five clicks on five clicks off three clicks to take you into your wattage mode and then from there you just push and hold it and as you'll see it will go from 20 and then round robin to 25 and then once you do that you just leave it to what you want and then it will stop flashing and then you can use it two clicks will change the actual style of the leds on the side so two clicks it basically scroll through so two is off another two is like this breathing mode which is nice slow go through the colors another two will then take you on to more of a faster breathing mode and I believe that is it. So yeah, there it go. It goes off again there. Um, another thing with these is obviously, as we say, the Type-C charging is down the side. There is a nice fire button on there, which the original one didn't have. It was auto only. And um, as far as the pods go, they pop on nicely. And as you can see there, not a bit of leaking at all. So that is a much better idea having Type-C on there. It just saves you having to lay it down and mess around with it. Um, but apart from that, it is pretty much like the original. But it does come in five different colors. So I'll put a picture up now for you to see that. As I say, it does use that FM Smart coil tech 4.0 technology full spectrum vaping the screen itself is a 0.69 inch screen you can use this with the button and auto fire as well so it's worth bearing in mind it's got 800 milliamp hour battery inside it and two mil capacity on the actual pod itself now let me just show you quickly while we're down here so the pod itself to this one you just snap it off to the side job done i don't know whether it's this new particular type of one because the one seemed fine but the 0.8 trying to get this top off is very hard and i'll be honest with you i actually thought i was going to break it and, and i wondered for a moment whether it was even the right way of doing it but you have to 
push it to the side, but you have to really give it some. Um, it's so well fitted now, it's getting looser the more you do it. But honestly, I cannot express to you, I mean, that is just literally, you know, easy. That, you have to really give it some. So when you first get one, then do bear that in mind. It will come off like that. Just commit to it, you'll be fine. Um, but yes, apart from that, all the airflow and everything is done via the pods itself. There is no adjustable airflow. You've got one airflow there, one airflow there. And depending on the ohmage of coil, depends on your airflow you'll get. So it kind of leaves it down for yourself. And that is one thing that is good about this, especially for beginners. You just pop your coil in and it will recommend your wattage and it will also sort your airflow out. There's not a lot to really think about. It's a nice, simple device. But right, apart from that, there's not a great deal else to tell you. So let's go up and let's talk about some pros and cons. Okay, so there you go. There it is, the Freemax Galax Pro. I'm kind of torn between this one, um, and you'll see why. Um, <laughs> we'll get into the um, we we'll go to the cons first. We we'll get them out of the way. Um, one con would definitely be the tightness of that pod. Now it does get looser the more you sort of open it, but to begin with, honestly, I thought maybe it's different. Maybe it's maybe there's a filling area. So there's a hole I have to squirt liquid in. I just couldn't figure it out it was so so tight but after a while it loosens up so but it is worth mentioning because as i say these are kind of designed for very new to vaping type people and that could be enough for them to be like oh i don't know what to do sorry i'm leaving it um oh, i'm not going to use it I, I don't understand it so it definitely needs to be a little bit looser as i say it does get looser but even now after opening and closing it probably 50 times it's still quite tight so that's worth bearing in mind um my biggest gripe with this would be the whole it's full spectrum LEDs and you've literally got that little tiny bit on the side. It is such a letdown. It really, really is. It's it, it's a shame because some of the, the original ones, the, the actual Galax and the one they did was like the Galax, which was more square, which we did a review on. I can't remember the name of it. It had so much LEDs on it and that, you know, full spectrum vaping. You think, wow, you know, I love an LED. I've got LEDs everywhere. I love them. If you're going to stick an LED on, stick it on there properly. But yeah, for some reason, they decided not to do that. They've, they've literally just kept it quite subtle. It's almost pointless having it on there, if I'm completely honest with you. So yeah, that's one gripe I do have. Another gripe would be the actual screen itself. I think it's it's very, very boring, let's be honest. It's a horrible, old-fashioned looking screen. Again, full spectrum vaping. This time in vaping, we're having some amazing screens out there on smaller devices than this. So there's no excuse. It should have had a better screen. It kind of feels either cheaply done or uh, old fashioned, quite simply, when it comes to the LED side of things. Um, but they're my two biggest gripes. And um, yeah, it, 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 it doesn't help that the actual device itself is quite a um, not boring, but mundane looking device. It's a very normal size, very normal shape, the slight cutting for the screen. It, it does. It either feels like it's it's a cheap mod or it's a old style mod. You know, something you maybe bought a year ago, two years ago, as opposed to something that's meant to be brand spanking new. In saying that, it is only 1949, so it's not massively expensive. Again, with most of these sort of devices, though, I'd rather have paid a couple of quid more and had a little bit better because even though it's all metal, you know, there is a slight plastic bit on the bottom, it just feels a little bit cheap. And along with that, pathetic led on the side and the screen it does it just makes it feel a little bit old-fashioned and cheap it's as simple as that and it, it it's annoying because the good things about it is the top fuel system and that pods are fantastic the pods i've used before are really really good the 0 0.8 is exceptionally good it is very nice indeed um, and i love the, everything else about it. the technology actually inside it is incredibly good it uses a auto reset puff counter which is silly because no one ever really looks at their puffs but the fact they thought about it so if it's not used within six hours it will reset it back to zero so you, you know if you are making that switch over from smoking or you're trying to quit vaping or quit smoking and using vaping to do so you can keep an eye on it you don't have to worry about keep resetting it and stuff like that it also uses that simple auto system so you can change your wattage as much as you want you leave it a little while take that pod out pop it back in it will reset it to what it thinks is the right wattage for that device which is fantastic again the airflow although i do like having adjustable airflow because then i can tailor it to what i want if you're a new vapor it's just something else to worry about so the fact that that airflow is built into the pods itself you don't have to worry you pop it in job done it auto wattages itself you know it's just very very good in technology side of things there's just a couple of other things there that are a bit annoying and and again another fantastic thing about this is the vaping experience itself as i say 
all of the pods I've used in these, to be fair, or all of the calls, I should say, have been very, very good. But for me, the 0 0.8 is, is phenomenally good. I mean, I've actually really enjoyed using this. I mean, I'll give you a quick puff now. So this is on the recommended 15 watts. It's super smooth, flavor's good, nice and strong. It's not the best flavor, it's not gonna blow you out of the sort of water sort of thing, but it's very, very good. Yeah, really good. A nice big battery in there as well, 800 milliamp, last all day, no problem at all. I mean, I used to smoke 20 cigarettes a day to give you an idea, that's kind of how much I vape to. And yeah, it's lasted me fine. It has needed charging obviously every day, it hasn't lasted me more than that, but you know, for a whole day, it's not a problem at all. It's really nice and smooth. The airflow is very, very good again, as I say. So yeah, I'm kind of torn because it's got some things in there that are absolutely fantastic, but then it feels like they've kind of cheaped out on other things, um, which I could kind of understand if it was just the Galax, but when you say pro, you kind of expect that little bit more. You expect to pay a little bit more, but you expect to get a little bit more as well. And what I like to have seen was, rather than just adding any old screen, add a nicer screen. So maybe this should have just been the Glax 2, you know, and then bought out a Pro afterwards or something like that. Because yeah, for me, when you put Pro in there, I'm thinking I'm gonna pay a little bit more, but I'm gonna get some good stuff for it. Which with this, I don't. All I kind of get the feeling from this is that this is what the Galax originally should have been. So yes, that's the end of the review, and it does simply come down to that. It, it, this is what the Galax should have been originally. You know, it should have had a little screen and stuff like that, or it should have been a Galax version 2, or whatever it may be, but putting Pro in there, I expected a bit more. And as I say, I'd rather pay a bit more. I'd rather pay another tenner and get a really good screen and get it like a properly nice LEDs on it and things like that, because again, it's all right, if they just said it's got LEDs, then you'd get away with a little bit on the side like that. But full spectrum vaping and knowing what they put into their other devices, this seems a letdown because the other devices with the full spectrum vaping was really, really good. I mean, I absolutely loved them. As I say, I am a bit of a sucker for an LED. Um, but yeah, I really, really liked them. But yeah, it just feels like this is what the Galax should have been originally. Um, but forgetting... Forgetting the, the bad little niggles, which may not bother some people. Some people may not want the LEDs at all. They might turn them off and some people might not really care about the screen. And if you look at it for who it's kind of aimed at in the vaping world, so new vapors, people that are on disposables looking to make the turnover to actual vaping, then it's absolutely fantastic. I so say that Auto 5 system works well, or you can use the buttons, so there's their versatility. The Auto wattage setting is fantastic, you ain't got to worry, because believe it or not, there's a lot of people out there that just think vaping is just too confusing. So for newcomers, they're making it simple with things like this is, is fantastic. Um, and as I say, even that silly little idea of auto resetting the puff counter, which to many of us means absolutely nothing, but to a few people it mean a lot. And the fact they thought about that is really, really nice. And obviously they've listened to the customers as well because they've moved the Type-C to the side, they've added the screen, things like that as well. But yeah, when you look at it for who it's aimed at, it's fantastic. I would highly recommend it if you are smoking and looking to make that change over. This is a very simple and good way of doing so. You know, you ain't gonna have to worry too much about it. If you're on disposables and you're sort of umming and iron about coming over to real vaping, again, it's really, really good. The only thing to bear in mind is if you are already into vaping or smoke, uh, vaping pod mods, things like that, this probably isn't for you in the sense of what you're going to get from it. There's some better devices out there. As far as the vaping experience goes, it's good. But then when you get into vaping properly, it becomes a bit of a hobby and then you want nice things as well and you just feel a little bit a little bit short left on that one. So yes, depending where you come from will depend whether this is for you. And isn't that the case with pretty much everything in the world anyway? So yes, decide where you are in that sort of spectrum of buying stuff and then make your mind up whether it's right for you. But um, yeah, I think it's pretty good. I would recommend it to a new sort of vapor. I think it's good in that sense of things. For anyone that's into vaping already, I'd probably say look elsewhere. But anyway, that's the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please do hit that like button. If you're not subscribed already, please do subscribe. And I'll see you again soon.